Today, we're going to be talking about designing a digital portfolio. In our session today, by the end of it, you will have a better understanding of what a digital portfolio is and have started working on sections that you will add to yours. We will be focusing on one career competency today. The career competencies are transferable and valued in every single industry. Employers around the world highly value and look for candidates who have competencies that they desire in their organization. There are eight specific career competencies that employers look for and seek. A career competency is a person's knowledge and behaviors that lead them to be successful in a job or throughout purposeful work. Career and work environments can change continually, and individuals need to understand and be able to adapt to these changes. Using competencies in a career also can promote overall well-being, and it can provide individuals with a sense of purpose. Today's competency that we will focus on is career and self-development. This has to do with continuous career and professional development. It also has to do with understanding your own strengths and weaknesses, and then also how you network with those in your organization and those outside of your organization or industries. So what is a digital portfolio? A digital portfolio is a virtual place for you to organize your work, expertise, and skills in action. This is a material that supplements your resume and your cover letter. It's also a continuation of your professional brand, so it needs to speak and be consistent with that. In your portfolio, you will showcase specific skills that align with what your career interests require. There are two main types of portfolios, a generalized portfolio and a specialized portfolio. A generalized portfolio is for a multidisciplinary artist who needs to showcase various genres of creative works. A specialized portfolio is for somebody that wants to showcase a specific type of work and expertise, and it's also used when applying for a specific career position that calls for that special genre, medium, or disciplinary that is used. Here we have two different digital portfolios that are on the screen. And what I want us to focus in on is how they are tailored to two different industries. So if we were thinking as an employer, which candidate would we want to interview and why might that be? Well, the answer is that depends on the employer and it depends on the industry that this employer is in. You'll see here, we have two very clear um, screenshots of a person's front page on their portfolio, and their name is clearly written there. We can see clear sections of their portfolio listed as well. And then the main thing is that we can see from both of these portfolios, what industry that they are in and what it is that they specialize in. So we can see that Diana is a copywriter and then we can see that Tamal is a software engineer. So for these two people applying to their specific industries, they will catch the eye of the person who is searching, who is searching for these two different positions. All right, so what I want us to do is begin by searching for a portfolio in your field that stands out to you. And I would like us to take a second to check on our phones or if you have your laptop open and can search on your laptop, searching for some portfolios in fields that you're interested in or in the field that you're hoping to get into. If you're not sure where to start, you could also use this example search that I've provided, Suzanne Voigt Photography Portfolio. And there you will find Suzanne Voigt's portfolio come up and you can use that to examine the sections that are included in the portfolio and then also what you like or maybe dislike about the portfolios that you're looking at. And this exercise is going to help you to start understanding and seeing what some of the really amazing portfolios that exist out there look like and seeing what you want your own portfolio to look like based on what it is that you're finding. So you're going to pause the video here to do this search.
Some things that you may have found from doing this search are some of the major sections that we're going to talk about today. So hopefully you've noted that. You also may have noted some of the visual components that you liked or maybe disliked and how that's going to influence what it is that you want your own portfolio to look like. All right, so now we're gonna go into a few more examples so that you can see some generalized and some specialized portfolios. This one here is for a multidisciplinary artist who, as you can see, based on the tabs at the top, is a painter, drawer, and a fiber artist. They also do performance work. They also do installation work. And what you can note about this is that based on the main page on their portfolio, they have done a really awesome job using some visuals to provide context to the various um, disciplines that they work in. And what you'll also notice is you can start to get a sense of this person's brand. You start to see some of the colors that's often used in their work, and it's really starting to paint a picture about who this person is. You'll also note the top, the tabs are very clear to read. It's easy to navigate and somebody will be able to easily click on those links to find information that they might be looking for. This next one is a specialized portfolio. And what you'll note here is maybe the bright colors or the color that stands out here with that red against the white and then the colorful images of their work on the center screen in a grid-like format. What you might also notice is that there's not very much text on this page. So they've done their text, um, they've hidden it in that top right-hand menu. So you have to click that in order to see what the tabs are and to navigate the site. But why this works is that you very clearly are able to see where it is that you do have to click to navigate the site. But also, if you're interested in learning more about their work, you're able to click the image and it's going to bring you to that particular project page. Um, and so for people that are just inclined to look at a project because of the photo that they're viewing, they're able to easily navigate the site. It's also clean. It's also very consistent. And this person would definitely be in the field of illustration. This next one, we have somebody who would be in the field of architecture. And so you'll see this is one of their pages that shows their different projects. And what you'll notice is that they've done a few things. They've showcased the process that they had to um, partake in to complete this project. That's going to be key for when you're developing your own portfolio. Something else you'll notice is that they've used clear and specific photos. And you'll also notice that they have kept their, their color scheme to more of a grayscale um, color scheme. And that speaks to who they are. That speaks to their brand. So it definitely starts painting a picture of who they are as a professional. And then you'll also notice the various um, design layouts that they provided. And then you can sort of see that there are brief descriptions of the project, of the process, some details about maybe the, the dates or what this project was, who the clients were. Those might all be included in that information that's there. This next one is a um, cartographer. So this is somebody that draws maps and designs maps. What you'll notice here is this is a screenshot of one of their projects. So if you were to navigate to their site and click on one of their projects, you would find that. What they've done a really nice job of here is laying out some clear photos from their project and its pieces, different pieces of the project. And then what you'll also notice is that they've done a great job of pulling in the programs that they had to use to create this. So they're showing some of their technical skills. They're also giving background information on who they worked with on this project, what this project was for, and then some of the things that they had to really consider while creating this. All right, so going into specifics, now that we've seen some examples of portfolios, you probably have already started noticing some consistent things that each of these portfolios has. And so these are some of the things that we'd like you to consider and use in your own portfolio. The first thing that you're going to include is a professional bio and a professional statement. These can live on the same page. They could be separate tabs, depending on how it is that you want to lay out your portfolio. 
But the professional bio or the about section is going to be a really important piece on your portfolio because this is the place where you get to really explain yourself and further talk about who you are as an artist and your purpose. Um, other sections in your portfolio are going to be your work organized in a specific way. We'll talk more about that. Um, it could be by type, but it is going to be your best work. Then within each of those projects that you use, you're going to include statements for that. And that is going to include a few different things. And we'll also talk more about that. You're also going to include contact information. And if you have social media links that you'd like to include, this can also go on your portfolio. This is especially true for those who use different social media platforms as another version of a portfolio or just a place where they show their artistic side or their professional works and things like that. So definitely include that if you do that. Some other potential sections could be testimonials, it could be a blog, and then it could be an online store. If you are somebody who does sell their work, um, you can include the online store in your portfolio. You'll just need to include pricing structure, information about how to purchase, and then shipping information too. All right, so now we're going to take a moment to work on the professional statement and the bio. So this is the about or about me section that you're going to have. This is typically one of the first tabs on your page when you're organizing them because this is something that you want your viewer to read first as they're scanning your site. And so we're just going to take a moment to process and put out some ideas for what it is you want to be included in your bio and some things that you want to consider. So some things that you might include would be really making sure that this is speaking to your brand. So if you don't have a clear idea of what your brand is, you haven't developed that, then that's actually going to come even before this step. So you do need to process that as well. Then the other things to process are what mediums you want to include. Do you want this to be a generalized portfolio or do you want it to be specific to a certain industry? And then also other things to include are your art or design style, some of the interests that you have, maybe passions or values that, that speak to you or influence your work. Those can be included as well. You also can share your viewpoints so you can share certain perspectives that you have or things that are really um you know, close to your heart and that really speak to the things that you value, the things that you want from a work environment or industries that you want to work in um, or populations you want to impact. All those sorts of things can certainly be included. You also might consider if you have a really profound experience or something that you really just, it just feels like it stands out to you, you could include a brief mention of that experience there. And then also skills that you may have developed. The section does not need to be long at all. You want it to be something that your readers and your viewer will read. Um, so it doesn't need to be paragraphs or anything like that. And then on this page, you also certainly want to link to a PDF resume or, um, excuse me, CV, um, depending on which one you have in the industry that you're in. So that link can go there as well. So now you're going to pause the video so that you can start processing this and start making some notes about what you want your about section to look like. All right, so now we're going to talk about the components of the portfolio, how we can organize it, and those details. So if we're thinking similarly to how an employer takes a look at a resume and they are only glancing at it for a few seconds, usually it's under 15 seconds, it's similar idea. It's a similar idea to a portfolio review. So you have typically less than a minute to capture someone's attention and to fully showcase your brand and keep them tuned in um, and actually looking at your site and taking it in. So you want to organize your work based on the user. So you want to make sure that your site is user friendly. So you often want to get feedback from other people as you are designing your portfolio and planning out how it looks. It's helpful for other people to give you feedback on how they're viewing it because that might be different than how you're seeing it as the creator. You know this very well with, with some of the work that you create. This is a similar concept. Um, another thing to pay attention to as you're organizing your portfolio is the number of works that you include. 
So it does depend on the industry and level of skill. If you're just starting off and only have a few projects that you feel showcase your best work, that really showcase who you are and that you feel confident in showing employers and showing other people, then you're going to include those. If it's only a handful, that's okay. Really, we only need about 10 total projects on a portfolio. Even if you are advanced in your profession, having your 10 best is really what's going to be most helpful because you don't want to overwhelm that viewer. And you also want to make sure that they're engaging with the content that you definitely want them to see. Um, you also want to start processing. How are you going to organize the work based on medium? Do certain works need to go together? Is there a certain order or flow to way to the to the way that the projects read. Those are all things to be processing. And then also something to consider, just like you consider for a tailored resume, do you want your portfolio tailored to the type of employer that you're aiming to work for and that you're trying to impress? So something else to think about. All right, so now for setting up your work, this is the details that I was talking about. So you do need to show your process for each piece of work. So as you are setting up one of your projects and each of your projects, you are not only including photos of that work, you're also including the concept of that work. You're including the process that it took you to create from start to finish, and then it's including the final project. So as I had mentioned earlier briefly, you are going to include process photos. So it could be preliminary steps, preliminary drawings that you created to get started. Include those in the process. And then any of the photos that you are including, make sure that they're high resolution photos, especially for the final product photos that you are showing. Additionally, we mentioned this briefly earlier, you're providing written detail of your work. So not only are you showing the process, showing the concept, but you're also describing it and writing that next to each of these photos or however it is that you're organizing that page and you want it to visually look. That description is there. The process description is there. You're providing details. If there was clients that you were working for, that gets included as well. And then you could include things like the date, the title of the project, all of those would go on there too. We mentioned it briefly with the um, cartography example. That person had included the technical programs that they used on that project. So this is certainly something for you to consider is including the technical skills that are applicable to that industry, especially if you're looking at certain jobs that your jobs and internships that you are hoping to apply to. What are some of the programs that they're expecting you to know? Do you have experience using them? And if you do, make sure that that's written and that's clear on the different projects that you're listing here so that when they reference your portfolio, they can see that. And then again, we don't want to overwhelm them. We want to make sure that they're seeing the content that you want them to see. So choose the best work that shows your best skills. And then you'll go into publishing your website. And so a few things to remember as you publish your website, make sure that you are marketing your portfolio. So that includes placing it in your resume and cover, lay cover letter headers. It also includes linking it on your LinkedIn profile and in any of the other social media platforms that you may use. Again, especially if they are social media um, pages that you have that are for your professional work, you certainly want to include it there as well. All right, so now we just want to talk briefly about some website platforms that you could choose to create your portfolio from. So there are a there are a vast number of website builders that you can use so that you don't have to build a website from scratch, meaning you don't need to have any coding skills. There are many builders where there are drag and drop functionalities that make it um, easy for you to really put together a nice and clean professional portfolio. You don't have as much control over the website design if, you, if you're not working from scratch and working from building something yourself, of course, but that can be okay and that can be helpful for people that don't want or don't have those skills. Um, another thing to consider though is even when you're using these sites, typically they are free, but 
paying for a domain or paying for an extra fee to have a specific and unique URL can be helpful, especially if you're forming a business or you want it to look as professional as it can. Of course, this first example um, here, you'll see they have the Weebly is the website builder that they're using. And so that's in the URL. That's totally okay if you want to do that and you just want to use the free site. If you want it to look a little bit more professional, you can pay and it will take out that Weebly and it will just be your domain that you're using. All right, some examples for some digital platforms that you can use. We have a pretty great relationship with Wix, so we often bring them in each semester to talk to students about using their website, some of the functionalities and some of the features that they have. So they've been really great to do that. It is a professional portfolio building platform. And with this one, no coding knowledge is needed at all. They have themes and templates that you can pull from rather than creating your own from scratch. And and then you can personalize them and make them your own. It has a really easily laid out um, place for you to put in those details that we talked about. So when you're including process information, describing elements of it, providing detail shots, and those final um, photos of the work, you can do all of that here and they make it pretty easy. Another platform to consider is Behance. This is a platform that is connected to Adobe, so it is an Adobe product. What's cool about Behance is that it's not only a place for you to include or create your portfolio, but it's also a place for you to network and start following other designers and interacting with them, and people can follow you on there, and so they're consistently seeing your work and seeing you post your work. Um, the other cool feature on Behance is that they do often have artists and professionals who are doing live stream sessions of webinars, of learning activities, um, showcasing certain things. So there's often things like that going on, on the site too. And then lastly on the site is also a job board. It's an internal job board. It's it's on the smaller side, so it's not as vast as something like Indeed would be, but it does have specific um, creative jobs listed in there. And so you can use that to find some and source some additional jobs and internships as well. Just like Wix, it has a really seamless and easy way for you to organize your works and include details on the process, on the shots, and the final um, pieces of your work as well. And then another platform that is used is WordPress. WordPress does require you to have some coding knowledge for some of their de designs, and it can be seen as a little bit more complex than the other ones that we've provided so far. Um, it does have themes and templates that you can pull from, so you're not completely doing anything from scratch still. Um, so you do have that to aid you. And then there's also a plugin that you can use on WordPress WordPress that makes it a little bit more user-friendly for those who don't have that coding um, experience or website building experience. So it creates a drag and drop like platform and that's Thrive Architect. Um, but WordPress is another versatile um, website that you can use to publish your portfolio, to create a portfolio. Um, and you can do anything from a very simple website to a more complex website. So it really is a versatile platform for different types of users. All right, so lastly, we just want to remind you to find your fit. So when creating your portfolio, when designing your portfolio, there are some things that you want to consider when it comes down to the industry that you are working to get into. If there are specific companies or specific niches that you're really wanting to get into, you want to consider that as well. Because in creating your portfolio, you really are creating a visual that helps others to see how you're going to fit in with their company culture and with their brand, how you're going to add to their brand and how you're going to complement and fulfill responsibilities for the job. Um, that they have. So you want to know the, the brand that you are offering and how it relates to that employer's brand. So how do you complement them? So some things that you can do is study employer websites, study um, other people's portfolios that work at companies that you're interested in or who are working in fields that you're interested in. That can help you to understand how you need to create your portfolio. 
you also want to consider work culture because different industries are going to have a different feel and be a better fit for certain people. So obviously consider that as well. And then also find other professionals, continue to network as you're building your portfolio, ask for feedback from people that are working in the fields that you're interested in, have them check out your portfolio and give them, give you tips based on what it took them to get into that field or into that company. Um, those can be really helpful connections and people for you to talk to in order to further your your brands and keep continue working on your career development. There is a book that we often recommend called Show Your Work. Um, this is a helpful resource for um, building and designing your, your portfolio and finding different ways to get discovered. And then the Wix platform that I mentioned as one of the websites you can use to create a portfolio offers a really great article on creating a portfolio website. So it walks you through step by step and they have additional support articles on their website for different questions that you might have, not just as they pertain to their specific platform, but just portfolios in general. All right. And we would love to have you connect with us if you are not already. You can come see us in person next to Atkins Library's main entrance. We are in the Atkins Annex. You can visit us for career coaching appointments if you want to get specific feedback on a portfolio or on anything relating to career development. But we also offer drop-in services so that you don't have to make an appointment. You can get immediate help and often students will come and have their portfolio reviewed or get some feedback on their portfolio. Drop-ins are from Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and they are offered either virtually via Zoom or in person. And then if you're not connected with us on social media, we would love to see you on whatever platforms you are using. Thank you so much for um, being here with us today and taking this time to work on your portfolio and advance your career. Thanks so much.